Hey, how are you? Welcome to Nutrition for Cognitive Optimization. Yes, we are talking about the brain today. We're going to change directions a little bit. Um, I am a registered dietitian, so we're going to be talking about nutrition related to how to keep our brain at optimal performance. So let's get started here because I think we have some amazing stuff to cover today. And hopefully you're looking forward to this as much as I am because um, I love the idea of how our body is so connected and so many things that I think you do personally day to day and you work with your clients day to day have to do with keeping focused and keeping performance at A plus, right? So we need to make sure that we can optimize it at all levels. Um, I mentioned I'm a registered dietitian and just a little bit about my background and we can go through that later. But um, I started out, I've been in the field a little while and um, started out in clinical nutrition years ago, um, was a director of nutrition for a kidney dialysis company. So kidneys kind of run the whole body system. So it was great to learn all that. And then quickly I got into private practice and then dove into exercise nutrition. And some of you may be familiar with Apex Fitness um, and Neil. And so I worked with them for a while. I did a bunch of research development, um, worked with the body bug. If you remember the biggest losers more than one of the first wearables. Um, I was kind of the project lead doing all, you know, our pilots and stuff on that it was fabulous. So I got to understand a little bit more about behavior modification and what it takes to the calories in, calories out, and how the body system works related to all of that. And since then, I've been doing my own business and I've been doing a lot more with the Air Force. Recently, I wrote a program for um, the enlisted and their children around nutrition and fitness. Um, I've also been looking at stress management with them and also using this. So we've talked about cognitive optimization with the military, and we also have been working with um, the Senate, our U.S. Senate on this. So I just presented them with something similar to this the other day. So just so you know, it runs a gamut of like how it can be utilized. So that's, you know, just a little bit of my background and, um, you know, we can go through, like I said, a few more things as we continue on here, but I wanted to give you an idea where I'm coming from with this. Um, so nutrition for cognitive optimization. What are we going to do here? We're going to talk about what that means to have cognitive performance, right? Where are we going with this? Um, what are some of the risk factors today that we deal with that might be deterring us from being at our optimal level? Um, what we can do about it? And these are the big ones, right? What we can do, um, a big one that you may have heard is the gut-brain connection. I'm gonna dive into that a lot more because it's fascinating and I think it'll explain a lot of how you can optimize yourself as well as some of your clients. Um, brain supporting foods, and these are like crazy. I want you to like really pay attention and maybe utilize those and um, work on behavior modification when it comes to different foods. Um, and then just overall nutrition tips on how we can be at our, our ultimate performance with our brain. Okay, so when I say cognitive performance, what does that mean? It may mean something different to all of you, but what I'm talking about and what we're gonna focus on today is the way we learn and perform. Right. So when we're doing let's look at fitness, for example, right, when we're doing anything athletic and movement, we have to learn. Right. Our body movement is a learning pattern. Right. And we have to perform at our optimal level, especially when we're looking at athletes. Right. Which all of us have an inner athlete. But I mean, we need to make sure that our brain can function at its highest capacity to take us to that level. Right. So that's what we're going to be looking at. We're also going to be talking about our memory. So memory potential, meaning like today, how we remember things, but also long term. Right. That's dementia, Alzheimer's, those types of things. Our memory is crucial and we can do a lot with nutrition around that. So attention and focus. How well can we like stay connected to what we're actually doing? Right. We need to be able to focus our mind to get things done, right? And I think that's so applicable for NASM, um, meaning that we're looking at any type of fitness performance type stuff. Um, and reasoning, 
right? <laughs> that may sound very basic, right? But reasoning is something that our brain does for us, which we don't even really think about on the daily, but it's something that we really need to pay attention to because it does get weaker over time. Okay. Um, sorry about that. I think I just changed the slide. So, um, yeah, so let's go through what this means for brain performance, right? And, you know, a lot of the things that we're doing day to day are actually undermining our brain potential. And we don't even know about it, right? Because they're such basic things. So I want to go through that a little bit. And then let's talk about how we can actually improve this through nutrition and through fitness. So I'm going to talk about fitness a little bit as well and how that impacts our, our brain and how it actually functions. Okay. So when we look at our risk factors for brain performance, right? Some of the biggest things, and this isn't new to anyone, but smoking is horrible for our brain, just horrible for it, right? It starts breaking down the cells at a very basic level. And those take a long time to regenerate. So it's not doing us any favors, right? Um, drinking, meaning alcohol, right, does not do well for our brain as well. We all hear this, you, you burned too many brain cells last night, you know, type thing. But alcohol does break down the brain cells, but it also causes an inflammation around the brain. And that's what starts breaking down the cells and doesn't allow us to live and be at our optimal performance when it comes to thinking, performance, um, and memory, any of those things, okay? Um, sleep issues, and we're gonna talk about that because I think that with so much stress that we have, sleep tends to be a pretty big issue, right? And that could be a whole nother presentation that we could talk about at some point. But um, when we're not getting enough sleep or the quality of sleep that we need, um, it starts impacting our brain as well. All right, so that's something to really think about. And again, we're gonna dive into that a little bit more. Um, poor diet. And that is where we're gonna spend most of our time on this one, okay? Because when we don't eat well, our brain does not get fed and we can get in that brain fog. You all know it, right? So that's something we really need to look at, okay? So we're gonna dive into that, but poor diet is one of the top things that can break down our brain over time. Um, lack of physical activity, and that's why you're here, right? Is to help people be more active. Um, we're gonna talk about different, how different activities impact the brain at different levels, right? So we're gonna walk through that, but, but a lack of physical activity is so horrible for brain function. Inflammation, okay, if you're not familiar with this term, what I'm talking about here is, you know, when you cut yourself, you get inflamed, meaning that it gets swollen, right? Well, we get that systemically, we get that through our whole system is inflammation. When we eat crappy, when we get stressed, when we smoke, when we um, have, you know, a horrible environment, we have horrible air quality, any of those things cause a systemic inflammation and again, not only is it horrible for disease states within our whole body, but for our brain function, it is so bad. And I can't underestimate that because it's so important that when we get inflamed and our brain gets inflamed, it totally kind of shuts down our brain function and our ability to perform at its highest level. Okay, so let's dive right in on these sleep issues because I, I mentioned how important that is. And for those of you who don't sleep well, you know who you are, right? But let me tell you why sleep is so important, okay? Some of the biggest things that we need to do is, um, because when, we, well, let me, let me just back up, right? When we go to sleep and we get into our sleep cycles, what happens is it starts clearing our brain. It's the one time during the day that we actually can like, rest our brain, if you think about it that way. And meditation will do that for us at a certain level, but the, the, the sleep stages that we get in are something that will clear. Um, they're almost like, I think of it as kind of like a little bit of powder in our brain, and it actually clears that out. And if we don't get in our sleep cycles and clean and allow the body to discard that out of our brain, 
it stays in there and that's what causes inflammation and dementia and issues related to brain fog, you know, not being able to focus and long-term issues around the the brain, right? So we need to activate that and clean the brain from those substances, right? So these substances are part of, they accumulate in there over time, okay? So we need to make sure that as we are doing this, we're getting the right amount of sleep, okay? So if you need to, you know, let me know if we need to talk about this in more detail, how to get into that sleep cycle and how to do that, but really take a look at your sleep. If you're not feeling well and you have a little bit, like I said, of brain fog or something that's, you know, impacting the way that you're thinking or performing, take a look at your sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, it could actually be the main reason. And I think a lot of times we underestimate that. Okay. So poor diet. Yes, I know. We're going to talk about it. So poor diet is ridiculous when it comes to our brain function. So all the things we're going to keep talking about here are related to nutrition. But one of the big things that causes like an inflammation or an issue in our brain are those lovely refined carbohydrates, right? So not all carbs are created equal. We know this, and this isn't going to be a carbohydrate lecture, Um, but we do know that When you eat complex carbohydrates, like all those lovely white things, right? The white breads, the pastas, um, even some of the starchy vegetables. um, What happens with that is, um, you know, those tend to be more of the processed foods. Okay. So anything that's more processed or has some of those more like, um, like I said, starchy carbohydrates to them, um, causes our brain to get inflamed and is the source of Alzheimer's and dementia. Okay, not the only source, but it does um, trigger that in our body because what's happening is when we eat those things, our blood sugar goes up so high so quick that it triggers our body to release insulin. Okay, and uh, most of the time it will overestimate that insulin production And then our blood sugar goes way down and drops real down, but that overproduction of insulin is what's detrimental to the brain. Okay, it starts breaking it down at a higher level and faster than we normally would. Okay, so those are the issues with those carbohydrates. I don't want you to think that those are all bad, right? Balanced out with some protein and fats, but I do want you to understand that too much of them and over a sustained period of time could be an issue to our brain. Okay. So again, that could be a whole nother space that we go into and talk about carbohydrates. Um, but I want you to understand this related to our brain today. Okay. Industrial oils is another thing that breaks down our brain at a really fast pace. What I mean by that are like those canola oils, anything that you get that's fried, right? Typically that's in a really bad oil. Um, and processed foods, fast foods, We all know those are bad for us, but they're super bad for our brain, okay? And I think, again, we don't realize it over time because sometimes we just get in this little bit of a fog or we don't feel well maybe, and we don't realize that it's also your brain doesn't feel well and it's putting you into a a, a downward spiral, basically, you know? So, yeah, so that's kind of what... um, Those fats, the trans fats, the aldehydes, those things without getting too clinical, that's really what's happening with these refined oils. So be really careful when you're looking at um, oils out there. You want to stay with the monounsaturated, polyunsaturated stuff with like olive oils, um, those types of things, and really stay away from the soybeans, the corn oils, those types of things. All right. Um, Processed food additives. Ick right? Anything where we've become this processed food society where we now know how to formulate to make it our palate taste good, right? I mean, look at Cheez-Its, for example, or something. They have put so much sodium and fat in there, the right amount that you just want to keep eating them and eating them because your brain is now like addicted. That's what we've created with these processed food additives is this addiction factor in our brain. We play on the dopamine levels and it's not healthy for us, okay? So that's what I mean when I wanna like look at these 
um, emulsifiers, different things that you find in foods. And we want to make sure that they're not um, disrupting our brain and our metabolism. Okay, because again, when we start getting in that blood sugar um, up and down spiral space, um, that's going to weigh on our brain. So we want to make sure that we're, we're careful with a lot of the junk that we're putting in there. You know, with those, those foods that have like, you know, the coffee creamers, like I mentioned on here, that have, you know, what, like, you know, 20 ingredients in something that should just be one, which would be milk, right? I mean, something like that. We just want to be really careful because all those additives, a lot of times will cause an inflammation in the brain. So I want you to really pay attention to those. Okay, as we're talking about the diet, I really wanna talk about omega-3s, all right? This is what we can do to help our brain. All right, you might be familiar with omega-3s, you might not be, right? Or you've heard it and you're like, yeah, fish oil's got it, check, check, and check. Okay, well, it's not quite that basic and we're gonna spend a little bit of time on it because it's so important, okay? So the brain is about 60% fat. All right, that's what the brain is made up of. So we need to take care of that fat by a lot of times giving it some good fat, okay? And that's what omega-3s are. Omega-3s, what they'll do for the brain is it improves mood, right? If you take the proper dose of omega-3s, the EPAs and the DHAs, you will feel most likely a little bit of a pep in your step, okay? So it will do that for you. It, that's what it does to the brain. It triggers that response uh, mechanism in the brain to improve mood. Um, it increases alertness. Okay, and these sound like things that you would have to take, you know, get your macros in check and make sure that you're doing the right B vitamins. This is omega-3 fatty acids. This is something you can get from the foods in these pictures, or you can take it as a supplement. But that's what it will do for you, okay? It improves cognitive functions, the way that you are working through solving problems. It gives the brain that ability to function at its max, okay? Um, improves memory. Oh, hallelujah, right? I mean, like everyone that I talked to is like, you know, I don't know what happened. I, I went into the kitchen to get a, something and I walked out with something else and I can't remember what I went in for. Right. I mean, it happens all the time. Where did I put my keys? Who knows? But, um, you know, we need to make sure that we support the brain as much as we can because it starts degrading over time. OK, so omega threes will actually help with memory on that. All right. Improves reaction time. OK, this is huge when you're working with clients or for yourself or with athletes. Reaction time, as you know, is critical. OK, and this may be something that you hadn't really thought about, that if someone is really not getting that one second, two second space, right, why don't you look at their omega threes? There could be an imbalance going on there and something that, like I said, you may not even think like omega threes when you're out working with them on a track or something. Who knows? But, you know, it's something that makes a big difference. It's the synapses in our brain that actually need to connect at a higher rate and we can help with that, okay? Um, slows down the aging of the brain. And I mentioned that, that our brain over time starts degrading and with omega-3s, we can help prolong that. I know, I know. So think about omega-3s in a different way, right? Um, okay, may prevent dementia. Okay, this is a big may, and I'm not making any claims here, but if you keep your omega-3s at a good level and you keep your inflammation in your brain down, that will help with your risk of dementia. All right, so I've been in uh, working in nutrigenetics, nutrigenomics for a little while now, meaning looking at your DNA and how, what you can do to impact your nutrition and your fitness from a DNA standpoint, okay? And when we talk about this right here with omega-3s, this is what we call epigenetics, how we can impact our DNA. So we all are given our DNA, doesn't change. But what we can do is we have like a dimmer switch. We can turn it up, we can turn it down. Okay, with omega-3s, even if you have a family history of dementia, you now can tone that down just a little bit with omega-3s. Okay, that's why we have to say may prevent. 
All right, but it's big like that. So I want you to really think about it, okay? Um, improves learning. And that's something, like I said, it actually um, filters into that space in the brain that actually um, helps you with the learning process. Okay, so we're gonna keep going here with omega-3s because um, there's, like I said, there's connections with omega-3s and the way that we like our immune function um, functions. And that's something really big right now. As we all know, we want to stay as healthy as possible. And when you're working with people and they're tending to like overtrain, which a lot of us do, or we're overly stressed, a lot of times omega threes can really help with that to bring that immune function up just a notch. And you wouldn't think of it from omega threes, but it actually works with our, our um, energy cycles. So you need it to make sure that you you can function properly. So um, think about that if you have someone who might be um, getting sick a lot or if you want to just keep your immune system boosted a little bit. Omega-3s are pretty um, fabulous for that. Um, not enough immune, immune, immune function can lead to illness. We all know that, right? Not just viruses, but also, you know, picking up any type of bacteria that's up there um, or out there, I should say. And also like, you know, any type of genetic illnesses. Okay. So again, that epigenetic, you know, place that we can, we can tone things up or tone it down. All right. Fatty acids, um, make up the, let's see the main frame of every single cell in our body. So not only is it 60% of our brain that's made up of fat cells, but most of our cells have a fatty layer coating. Okay, so we need to keep that sufficient. We need to keep it functioning properly. So that's where omega threes will actually jump in. Okay, and so where are we getting these omega threes, right? Like I said, the DHA and the EPAs, um, we get them from fatty fishes mostly. Okay, so we need to eat things that have omega threes in them. We can get them, and I'll, I'll go through this a little bit more. But you know, those types of things or like I said, a supplement are the main places to get it. All right, so, and um, again, don't underestimate eating fish multiple times a week, okay? And the fatty fishes are the best, you know, the salmon, um, the um, sardines are amazing, and herring and mackerel, those types of things. But um, I seem to think that salmon and sardines if you're into them, <laughs> um, are the best way to go because they're so easy and they have a really good amount of omega threes in them. All right, so this I, here I, I, I indicated this omega six to omega three ratio, and if you've ever heard of that, um, you know what I'm talking about because omega six is what we get from. If you look on the this little chart here, seventy percent are from like processed fast foods. Um, uh, you know, our oils, those types of things. So if we're eating the typical American diet, we're getting a lot of omega-6s and that's what's going to cause inflammation. Okay. So we want to balance that out, get our omega-3s higher than our omega-6, which is a task given our American diet, right? So if we're eating you know, let's say something, you know, processed in the morning, even if it's cereal or a donut or whatever type thing. And then we have, you know, some, even if it's just processed food during the day, something that's packaged, doesn't even have to be fast food. And we eat a little bit of fried food. Our omega sixes are jumping up there, right? So we need to balance that out. A lot of times I recommend taking um, an omega three supplement with your meal. Okay. So if you're eating, um, a non grass fed beef burger, take your omega three with it. Okay, so you're balancing that out a little bit. And you're going to keep that that inflammation in check, right? So you're going to get your omega threes to at least be the same if you can get them higher. Okay, so that's why I want to keep that going because that that ratio in, in is going to influence everything meaning brain development. Yeah, our brain still develops over time, right? And again, we're not regenerating the cells like we did when we were very young, but we need to keep those going, right? And keep them healthy. So that's where that, that balance is going to give us, okay? Um, decreasing risk for coronary heart disease. So not only just the brain, but the heart needs it, right? We need this stuff. 
hypertension or high blood pressure, all right, cancers, all right, that inflammatory process in our body is what makes it susceptible to any type of wrong cell that's going to happen in our body and our body to proliferate them. So we need to like keep that in check. All right. Diabetes. Like I said, that blood sugar thing is something that is really um, detrimental and it could be to a lot of people. Right. Our diabetes numbers are skyrocketing. So, yeah, arthritis. That's a big one. And I am not making any type of um, exact claim here, but I have a lot of people, including my dad, that has had arthritis in his joint to where he had this big nodule on his on his fingers. And I've seen this before. Bumped up his um, omega threes in supplements and it went down. And he has more um, full range of motion. So something you may want to try with your clients, um, if you have someone that has arthritis, you know, there's no hurt to giving omega threes. So give it a shot and um, see what you think with that. But it actually does help. And again, that ratio could be the issue, not just directly omega threes. Okay. Or neurodegenerative disease. What I said, anything that breaks down the brain function, we can, we can make a difference with omega threes. But again, that ratio thing um, is, is kind of big. So think about that when you're looking at, you know, your diet, clients diets, um, family members diets. Okay. All right. So when I mentioned polyunsaturated monounsaturated fats, um, I wanted to give you some examples, right. Of some of the good fats, because I think it's really important that we know the difference between a saturated fat. So saturated fats come from animal and you probably already know that, but, um, means that, you know, you're getting it from beef. You're getting it from anything that comes from an animal. All right. That's where you're going to get a saturated fat. Those are the ones that tend to typically, um, unless you're genetically prone to not having an issue with that, um, that's the one that's going to cause some type of issue um, within your arteries um, and that type of thing. So we want to look at the ones that are a more unsaturated. OK, and that's going to be, like I said, the wild salmon, the sardines, the mackerel, um, avocados. Those are fabulous. OK, I know that you look at fat content when you're looking at. Um, macros and you're trying to optimize, especially for weight loss, right? But I think we underestimate the magic, and I'm going to say magic <laughs> because I feel this way, of these good fats, okay? Because that's something you might want to integrate on a regular basis, okay? Um, these that actually give you these benefits, okay? When you look at inflammation, a lot of times with weight gain, there is inflammation and we can't figure out why they're not losing weight. Sometimes this is the magic. If you just um, increase a little bit of the good fats for them, not only is their metabolism running better, but you might decrease the inflammation markers within the system to give them ability for the metabolism to kick in. Okay. Just as a side note with that one, um, olive oils, obviously, you know, drizzle that on, on, salads on your on your cooked vegetables okay if you want to get that in there an extra virgin olive oil drizzled on top would be fabulous um, and i put in here grass-fed um, butter or ghee so um, don't be afraid of those again when you're getting the grass-fed stuff instead of just the regular processed butter in the store you know you're getting more of those omega-3s so they're not getting fed corn and soy, they're getting grass, which actually Im improves and, and helps them to have more omega-3s, right? So that's, that's anything grass-fed, right? So grass-fed cheese, those types of things. Look for that, and you're actually going to see a big difference in the way the body looks at it, okay, and metabolizes it. So coconut oil, I know um, there's been controversy on that one. The, the MCT oils and coconut oil, um, I think when you look at a polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, it's a great way to go um, in moderation. Walnuts are fabulous, again, for um, omega-3 content. And, you know, chia seeds, hemp, 
flax, those for that are going to be um, vegetarian or, or vegan are a great way to go to get this in. So, um, you know, take a look at your options when it comes to omega threes, because your brain and your body will thank you for that. OK. All right. So here's some cool stuff that I want to go through when it comes to exercise, because like I said, you know, we all know that exercise is good for us, but especially good for our brain. Right. Because it creates new brain cells, which is unreal. Right. It's like it's magic. We don't have a magic pill that does that for us. So if we can exercise and I think this is something you can keep reiterating to your clients, too. Right. Is that it's actually going to create new brain cells just by moving. OK. Um, ensures existing neurons stay healthy. And we're talking about neuron connections. We're talking about those synapses and the neurons that actually connect and um, to give us like I said, like a memory, okay? Or to get us to process, higher level processing. We need that. And that's what exercise does for us, okay? Um, it boosts neuroplasticity, meaning that our brain can stay um, fluid in a way. You know, if things harden up, it's just like your body, right? If things get too tight, you don't have full range of motion. It's similar with our brain, okay? It needs to be able to continue to process. So that's what we um, what exercise will do for us. And then this is kind of cool that if you want to remember something like let's say you're studying, you're in school or, you know, you have a big project or you're presenting something um, and you want to remember things, um, do some exercise within four hours um, after learning the thing and you'll have a better chance of remembering it. So it's kind of cool, I think, um, something we don't really talk about. And the other thing that I think is even more fascinating is when we're talking about our genes, okay? When we exercise, we influence over 6,000 of our genes. Okay, I don't know of anything else out there that does that. So that means out of all of our DNA, we are impacting that many of our genes to do something different and to improve. Okay. That's, that's huge. All right. So if you think about fitness, it's not just for the immediate and, you know, the things that we typically know for longevity and, you know, so things it's actually coming down to a genetic level. And that's, that's pretty cool. I think. Um, okay. So this is kind of cool. This is what I was thinking with, um, when we're looking at what different types of exercise do for the body. And this is, um, I think of this more for different age levels, right? And for when we're working with clients to actually trigger different um, processes within the body, right? So, you know, if you're looking at a high intensity cardio, um, so what that actually hits is brain derived neurotropic factor. Okay, whatever. Right. So that's a BDNF. And we're looking at genetics as well. That's huge. Right. This is a a factor within our brain that supports the growth of new neurons, not just cells, but neurons, meaning that those connections, those synapses for learning and cognitive function. OK, so that's what a high intensity thing will do for us. Right. So that, a lot of times it's why we feel so energized and we feel like we are more efficient, you know, for the next day or two. Right. It's because our our higher level learning processes have made more connections. OK, and that's really cool that we can do that just by, you know, a high intensity workout. All right. Multidimensional movement. Um, you know, yoga or cross training, whatever it is that you're moving back and forth, or like I said, at, at different planes, um, you're building new connections in the brain. And we know that um, for any of you that, you know, have really looked into yoga type of thing, um, you are building new patterns within the brain. And it's really great as we get older as well to keep the brain kind of challenged in that way. So it's pretty um, fantastic when we're looking at brain um you know, optimization when it comes to that. Um, tai Chi, meditation, mindfulness. There's been so many studies on this over the past, you know, let's say 10 years type thing. It's it's newer that we really like um, engaged in, in true studies about this. 
But what we're what we're looking at is improving focus and productivity. Okay, so we can actually again train the brain to be more focused and more productive. Okay, so pretty cool. All right, then now we're going to change speeds just a little bit because I want to talk a little bit about intermittent fasting. And again, we could go on and on and on about this because I love this topic, but I want to talk it again, um, or mostly about for the brain. All right. So we're looking at intermittent fasting. What we're doing is really helping with insulin sensitivity. We're helping with the blood sugar regulation within the body. Okay. And that's one of its biggest functions. And what I mentioned a little bit ago is that blood sugar flux, right? Is what can cause some, you know, detriment to the brain, right? When our blood sugar goes too high and when it goes too low, all right, so what intermittent fasting can do for that is to help with that regulation, okay? Um, it also normalizes the hunger hormone, all right? And so with that, um, it can actually, you know, help with the aging process. And again, you know, if we're regulating our hunger, um, what we're doing is probably have a little less processed food. We might not be craving the things that are bad for us, um, those type of things. So it's something to really like, you know, look at when it comes to intermittent fasting. Again, I, I don't want to um, say this is the, the best thing for everyone because we need to be careful with some underlying medical conditions. But as a dietitian, I think it's a really great space for our brain. So I just wanted to give a little disclaimer with that right there. Um, it helps lower tri triglyceride levels. Okay, again, we're looking at cholesterol, triglyceride, those types of things. Um, helps suppress inflammation and fight free radical damage. All right, I mentioned inflammation multiple times. And the reason I did is because it is the underlying reason for a lot of chronic disease. Okay, so when we're looking at intermittent fasting, what we're actually doing is it supports a decrease in inflammation, systemic inflammation, okay, and free radical damage, which is what can cause, you know, our risk factor for cancer and any type of, you know, odd cell development type thing. Okay, plus exercising in a fasted state, and this is something that we could go on and on about because I'm sure a lot of you have have different ideas about this, but exercising in a fasted state can um, help counteract muscle aging and wasting. All right. So we know this from, you know, the studies with AMPK. We know how when we're in a fasted state that our body actually produces its um, its natural AMPK and that we can keep our body um, muscle supported that way. But um, it's a really cool thing to look into when we're looking at brain and also just like in general overall health. OK. All right, so we talked about some carbohydrates, but we didn't really dive into sugar. Sugar, are you kidding me? This is one of the worst things for the brain. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I have to be the one to break that to you. <laughs> you know this, you know it. But, um, but one of the things, again, when we can reduce our, our refined sugars, and that's why I put on here, not all carbs are created equal, right? And we know this, but if we can keep sugar, meaning like refined sugar, lower, okay? Be careful because I want to make sure that we're not talking about fruits, okay? So yes, if you're eating a lot of very high sugar fruits and that's all you're eating, your blood sugar will do that flux that I mentioned before, but for the most part, that's not going to give you that same um, response as eating just refined processed sugar. Okay. And that's where, you know, like look at labels, um, you know what sugar is, but um, what we can do if we lower that is we can actually improve our memory. If we can cut out some refined um, carbs and sugar, we can improve our memory. I mean, it's crazy, right? It sounds so simple and it kind of is, but I want you to think about it from that standpoint. Okay, we can increase the volume of our hippocampus, which is our memory center, okay, by 12%. I mean, that's just insane, right? So we can actually grow our brain 
by reducing sugar. Think about it. Okay, this is just how our body works. And we, we don't give it the credit that it really deserves when it comes to that. Okay, so high blood sugar levels are the detriment to the shrinking of the hippocampus. All right, so I really encourage you and to talk to your clients um, and to look at it yourself. You know, I think you probably do, but um, sugar's so hidden and everything. So just kind of really take a look at what's going on there. Um, and we can significantly decrease our risk for dementia, like I said, by, by improving this, um, the size of the hippocampus and to um, keep that inflammatory markers down we can actually decrease our risk of dementia. All right, and uh, better processing speed and learning. Okay, so to optimize this brain potential is doing some very basic things, right? We talked about omega-3s. We've talked about the, the process, the omega-6 to the omega-3 ratio, and now we're talking about just general foods and decreasing our, risk, um, our intake of sugar. And that can make a big difference in how um, are the way that we process. And again, when you're working with athletes, that could be that those two seconds or one second or 0.2 seconds that make a big difference in their reaction time. Okay. And that can play a big, big role in that. So really think about, you know, overall diet and also, you know, like I said, refined sugars and carbohydrates. Okay, now I want to go into some, uh, some kind of fun stuff, which is the gut brain connection. And when I talk about the gut, I mean the small intestine, large intestine kind of stuff. And that's what we call the gut. All right. And the reason this is so important is they talk to each other. Okay, if you think about, okay, let's just say you think about eating food, right? You think about it, your stomach starts secreting acids and different things to start processing food just by the thought. Okay. That's how powerful the brain is to what's happening in our GI system. Okay. So it goes both ways. Right. And that's why I want you to look at this is that the gut brain um, connection goes very deep. Right. So it's actually hitting neurotransmitters. It's going to stre stress, stress and anxiety. Okay. We feel stress, anxiety. Typically we get like a stomach ache, right? And we don't feel well, but what that's doing is that's sending signals to the brain to either fight or flight or to, you know, to get these like reactionary hormones going. Okay. Because it's like, Oh no, something's happening. We don't know what it is, but let's prepare. Okay. So that's how it's sending signals up to the brain. All right. So our mood is actually triggering different responses in the brain. And then our brain is sending down from, you know, serotonin, our good feel good hormones or our stress hormones um, are actually like circulating. So that connection is really tight. OK. And what is happening there is, you know, our current American diet is so lovely that it starts aggravating the gut permeability. So what's happening is we're eating, you know, some of these, you know, more processed food or junk food or things that aren't necessarily fibrous. Our fiber intake has gone way down over time. Um, our goal is around 35 grams a day. And we typically get Americans around 15. OK, so it's really bad. And what that's doing is it's allowing our gut to be permeable, meaning that foods that we eat little pieces of it break out of our intestines and go into our system and cause us to be inflamed. Okay. It makes sense, but we don't think of that on the daily, right? We don't think of that day to day. So this inflammation in our body, a lot of times can be caused from this, this gut permeability. All right. So we need to protect that. OK, and we need to protect that because we need to protect not only inflammation, but our brain performance. Right. And so when I'm talking about um, prebiotics and probiotics, those are the things that actually are the good bacteria in our our intestine. OK, so we have more. This sounds really gross, I know, but just bear with me. We have more bacteria in our GI system than we do like cells in our 
our skin kind of thing is one of the highest amounts. So we need to make sure that we keep the good bacteria in there and not the bad bacteria. Okay. So the good bacteria, we're going to plant them with the probiotic and then we're going to feed them with a prebiotic. That's the difference kind of thing. All right. So we need to make sure that the body gets all the good bacteria it needs. And then we need to kind of keep it reproducing itself. It's kind of what it is. All right. And that will keep that permeability in the gut in check. All right, so probiotics, fermented foods, you know, the sauerkrauts, the kombuchas, the kefir, you know, anything pickled, fermented type stuff. All right. Um, you know, even, you know, anything, I don't know, you, you know, the ones, the foods that I'm talking about. And um, but then then I want to make sure that you keep that built with prebiotics. OK, so. Jicama is a good one. If you're not familiar with it, I get mine cut up already at Trader Joe's. It's fabulous. Um, Jerusalem artichokes or sunchokes, if you've ever seen those, you know, instead of potatoes, look for these bad boys. You know, you can roast them the same. You can make them into mashed potatoes, but you get so much more of a prebiotic benefit to your gut from that. Um, garlic, onions, leeks, all those are so great. Um, dandelion greens, um, broccoli greens, asparagus. Asparagus are a great prebiotic for the gut, but we want to make sure that we're giving it even more fiber with just greens in general, okay, and different types of vegetables. And that's what's going to keep that gut connected so it keeps our brain from being inflamed and keeps it healthy so that we can optimize it, okay? And here I want to give you just a little bit of like some healthy foods. Um, we talked about fish oils a lot, um, black and green teas, you know, um, a lot of times the green tea, the ECG, EG, <laughs> um, well actually is really great for the body as well for that, for the intestine, um, and to keep the brain triggered and healthy. Spinach, kale, um, avocados, any, any kind of green leafies are fabulous for the brain. Okay. Um, dark chocolate. Hallelujah. I'm giving you like finally some good news. Right. Um, but that's 72% to 80% kind of dark chocolate. Um, so eat that, you know, it's really great for that. Um, but you know, again, the, the milk chocolate with all the sugar isn't as fabulous. Okay. Um, eggs, let's talk about eggs real quick is because the choline in eggs is so amazing for the brain. All right. And when you eat eggs, if you can do an over easy and keep the, the yolks a little bit liquid, you get more of that choline that helps with with metabolism and the whole methylation of our cells. And that's what's going to keep your brain on fire. OK, so don't be afraid. Um, eggs being bad is so 80s that we are done with it. We've had studies that that show that eggs are good and especially the yolk and the and the choline, if you and if you can, like I said, do them a little bit more runny, even better. Um, and then extra virgin olive oil, we talked about that. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna give you just a few examples of different things that you can do um, to move and to make things fabulous for your brain. Okay, I call this a little cognitive brain boost drink. And yes, I am using coffee. And I think coffee, the caffeine and the other um, flavonoids in coffee have been shown to be beneficial for the brain. So don't be afraid if you can. Um, you know, it's actually great for brain health. OK, and turmeric. We didn't talk about this much, but I want to make sure that you understand that um, the curcumin, which is the medicinal properties of turmeric, um, you can, you can do it as a powder or in capsule form, like here, just put it in your coffee. But, um, what it does is actually reduces inflammation and it's shown to help with cognitive function. Okay. So pretty amazing stuff. And then throw in some MCT oil to get that fat boost, to get the brain a little bit of those ketones and to, um, you know, promote those ketone production in the brain. All right. So it's a great little boost. And if you do something like this, get a little, um, you know, a little mixer or something to, to blend it up or put it in your, in your bullet or whatever, because the MCT will sit on top and it's kind of gross. But anyway, this is a great way to do it. All right. So we'll walk through a few more different things. Um, you know, eat your greens, spinach and kale are fabulous. 
Okay, the xanthines, the lutein, the zeaxanthin that come from dark leafy greens are so good for eyes and for the brain stimulation. Okay, so it's going to give you that amazing little boost that you need. All right, and trust me on that, like put it in your smoothies and don't be afraid to get it every day. All right, avocados, um, the potassium and the fat in there, like I said, um, the good fats um, are going to be a good energy boost. All right, and it's a great way to add fat to greens because it helps with the absorption of like those good nutrients. All right, um, blueberries, eat your blueberries. I can't stress that enough. Um, have a handful of blueberries every day. And again, don't be afraid of the sugar for those. Those are one of the lowest foods in sugar or fruits, I should say. Um, but the benefits, the antioxidants that those provide could actually decrease your risk for dementia. I know, a little, one handful of blueberries could actually make a really big difference. It helps with cell survival and um, an anti-inflammatory. So, you know, just get them. If you like them, great. If not, then, you know, look for, you know, blackberries or pomegranates. Um, those types of things are beneficial as well. That color, right? We're looking for the purple reds kind of thing. Um, we talk about eating the rainbow. Make sure that you put those in those categories, right? Um, okay, broccoli. This is kind of cool. So... What happens with broccoli is you want to either cut it maybe 10 minutes before you eat it or mix it with some mustard seed after you cook it. Because what happens with broccoli is um, sulf sulfurophan is what the beneficial ingredient to broccoli is for the brain, for decreasing your risk of cancer. Um, but it needs to be activated which is so interesting, right? Because broccoli is kind of um, a vegetable that protects itself. So if you cut it up a little bit, um, it actually releases more of the sulf sulfurophan, okay? And that's why um, it's so good to chew broccoli, the same thing, is it releases more of that. And we get this cognitive performance from it. So it's really great, but mustard seed will also activate that if you wanna put that in after you've made your broccoli. Just a little tip here and there. Um, mushrooms are so good for the brain and we have such amazing research over the last few years on our different types of mushrooms. I'm not talking about just those little white ones you get in the store, okay? But um, Four Sigmatic is um, not sponsored by anyone, but um, they're a really great brand that has been able to bring mushrooms in a, um, almost you can have it like a coffee, you know, um, substitute type thing where you can get all these mushrooms to stimulate brain activation and cognitive performance amazing stuff. So, you know, look into it a little bit, but it actually helps with, like I said, with the glutathione production, which is pretty fantastic and amazing for the brain. Okay. Um, and again, it's linked to longevity. So um, those are pretty important things I'd say. All right. So wild caught salmon, I mentioned it a, a few minutes ago, but those good fats and the omega threes in a wild caught, um, are incredible. And we're finding now too that even a grass-fed beef has very similar omega-3s to a wild-caught salmon. So think about that. I mean, we kind of underestimate the benefits of beef other than protein, right? But when we can look at omega-3 activation, um, and compare that to a salmon, that's pretty um, fantastic. So not only is it you know, beneficial to the brain, but it's um, gonna give you all those omega-3s to go through for a whole body system, okay? Um, drench your greens in olive oil and don't be afraid of it. I know when you're counting macros and you're looking at the whole big system, this is really important. Okay, like I said, sometimes that's what we even need just to kick our body into a metabolic state. So think about that. But for our risk, decreasing risk of Alzheimer's and dementia, um, we have some really great research, especially from like a Mediterranean diet standpoint. That's where we got a lot of the, the research. But, um, you know, it's a really great place to add in some extra virgin olive oil. And like I said, when you add it to the greens, you're activating even more of the availability of the antioxidants for the body to take in. Okay. Um, 
and lean chicken. And I know a lot of you do that, but for neurotransmitters and the serotonin response in the brain, that's going to be a kicker. Okay. It's going to actually activate that. And, you know, especially if you add that with your greens, whatever it's, it's, you know, a miracle kind of thing. Um, not quite, but it's um, really great for you. Um, and then, like I said, uh, dark chocolate, I just think like that's pretty fabulous. Once you get your taste accustomed to it, if you start with the 72%, I think you'll, you'll like it. Um, but the benefits are so fabulous, right? So don't think of it. I mean, it, you end up looking at it as a treat, but um, it's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and it reduces, you know, LDL or um, your bad cholesterol levels too. So there's a lot of benefits to that. And uh, with memory function, it's really great. So don't be afraid to like add these things in. Um, and so with that being said, I want you to really think about the opportunity that you have when it comes to performance, um, especially like I said, with fitness um, and looking at brain function. There could be some of those small pieces that you might be missing or even like joint mobility when it comes to omega-3s, certain things that I think that could actually make a really big difference when it comes to a fitness level of someone or keeping someone sharp so that they can be more productive in their activities, right? So if we look at brain optimization, there are so many opportunities there. Um, you can reach out to me at any of these places. Um, you have my email. Um, you have my website, you know, check me on Instagram, whatever it is, but I would love to hear from you. And I hope you got a lot out of this. I get very excited about brain optimization. So, um, hopefully you did as well and have a fabulous seminar. Talk to you later. Bye.